Welcome back to my channel, everybody. It's Leah with Skin Beautiful Rx, and today we have a very quick ret uh, video about retinol with the perfect person to have this video with, Ben Fuchs with Truth Treatments. Uh, ben, I'm so excited, as always, to have you here and to talk Thanks. about retinol um, because this is a hot topic. I feel like this is a huge PSA video, and I'm just excited to have it with you. Thank you, PSA is in public service announcement. It sure is, because the public needs retinol. to know about retinol. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Leia. You get it. Retinol yes. is a superstar active ingredient, and as you and I are dedicated to our clients' beauty and skin health, it's like we, we love retinol. I, I can speak mm -hmm. for you. I, I don't mean to speak for you, but, but we, all, we love retinol, and I, I consider myself personally an advocate for retinol, and it hurts my feelings personally. It hurts my feelings when I hear people dissing on retinol, especially when I hear skincare professionals dissing on retinol. Mm -hmm. And when I hear people say they can't use retinol or they don't know how to use it or it was too hard for, too harsh for them. Or, right. So retinol is, uh, has a reputation for being super active, and indeed it is super active. In fact, along with alpha hydroxy acids, and I would say probably even more than alpha hydroxy acids, it's the most active thing you can put on your skin. Vitamin C is also active, but vitamin C is not as stimulating. Retinol mm -hmm. stimulates. It, it, it's like taking your skin to the gym. And mm -hmm. in order to take your skin to the gym effectively, or in order to lift weights effectively, we'll say, you already have to have some muscle development. Mm -hmm. you're gonna go, if you just got out of the hospital, you're not going to lay on the bench press and start benching 225 pounds, right? Right. You start yourself off slow. You're going to build up your strength. And it's the same thing with retinol. To use the analogy... Your skin has to have a certain strength, a certain mm -hmm. resilience in order to maximize the benefits from retinol. So that's mm -hmm. why we start off with the retinol one uh, percent. We recommend people start off with retinol one percent and get their skin acclimated to five percent. But most importantly, and this is super, super important, I'm going to say now, our nutritional status has to be such that we can we have the raw materials in our skin to build the tissue. Mm -hmm. to, to build tissue, to respond to the retinol effectively. Mm -hmm. So that if you're missing, and mostly it's fats, by the way, essential fatty acids, if you're deficient in essential fatty acids, if you're deficient in fatty vitamins, if you have malabsorption of fats, if you're may, you may be supplementing or taking in fats or eating correctly, but you may have malabsorption of fats. If you had a gallbladder removed, if you have an intestinal problem, if you have something called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO, you may have heard of that, or if you have a problem with your gut bacteria, all of these are going to compromise your ability to absorb nutrients from supplements and from foods, and it's going to show up on your skin. So mm -hmm. you have to have a certain health. There has to be a certain uh, baseline degree of health. Retinol is always the same, but people's skins are different. Right. They're, they vary from individual to an individual, and even within one individual, they vary uh, for women, for example, within their, uh, their cycle, with their menstrual cycle, Specific foods, if you have a digestive problem, if you eat specific foods, your skin is going to become more sensitized. Not, and then, of course, the nutritional deficiency issue. So to use retinol correctly, especially our retinol, because as you know, Leah, I'm not playing around. No, 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 this no. Is, this is skincare for the big girls and, and guys. And I, <laughs> I, felt, I felt that uh, there was a segment of the marketplace that was not getting their needs met because products were being dumbed down. So there was like a lowest common denominator effect where uh, companies wanted to sell the most amount of products to the most amount of people. And then savvy and sophisticated people like yourself and like, you know, the people who do business with you, mm -hmm. they weren't getting their needs met. So right. I wanted to provide a product for somebody who is savvy and sophisticated enough to understand how to use retinol, not to overuse it, to have a certain amount of strength, to people who already had a certain amount of strength in the skin and a certain baseline degree of health. So if you want to use retinol correctly, this is the couple things that you want to do. Number right. one, you want to make sure that you're either supplementing or I like supplementing with an essential fatty acid supplement. Now, if you don't want to, some people don't like supplements, they want to go with foods, that's fine. If you're going to go with foods, eggs, organ meats, fish, um, uh, uh, seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, these are all good sources of oils. But uh, the best is just get on an essential fatty acid supplement, something like mm -hmm. Udo's Blend. Fatty vitamins also, vitamin A, vitamin E, uh, vitamin D. I, don't, I like people to get vitamin D from the sun more than supplements, but either way, I, and also you can use a sun lamp if you live in uh, Ohio in the wintertime or you live in Seattle. You can I don't use a sun lamp. And then here's another thing. It's very skin protective. Phytonutrients. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is the nu nutrients that are in plants. 
nutrients yeah. in plants, the carotenoids and the flavonoids and the various phenols and phytosterols, etc. There's hundreds of these things. They are very, very skin protective. In fact, their job in nature is to protect the plant from the sun. One of their main jobs is to protect the plant from the sun, and they do the same thing for your skin. But with these fatty nutrients, in addition to the fat, uh, phytonutrients, fatty phytonutrients, the fact that uh, a lot of people aren't getting them, period, is uh, compounded by the fact that a lot of people have malabsorption of fats, as we were talking mm -hmm. earlier. If you have malabsorption of fats, you're not going to absorb your carotenoids and your flavonoids and your pigments from your veggies. So right. if, that, if, if that's you, you can help uh, assist your digestive tract in absorbing those by braising your broccoli or braising your, your uh, uh, Brussels sprouts or releasing some of those fats and coconut oil and butter, and then they'll be able to travel into your blood, uh, get into your bloodstream more effectively and travel to the skin more, effect more effectively. So mm -hmm. working with your nutrition is job number one, to make your skin nice and strong and robust. Secondly, you want to give your skin days off. We live in this world where we always think we have to be doing and doing and doing, and we don't understand or appreciate the power of rest. Right. During the rest periods when your collagen is growing. During the rest mm -hmm. periods when your connective tissue is growing in response to, the, to your retinol. And I should say before, I even, before we get too much into uh, how to make the skin strong, retinol's job is to turn, uh, help cells grow, to push mm -hmm. cells along from the bottom to the top. Right. They work at the level of, and that's at the level of the epidermis with the skin cells, but they also work at the dermis where you have fibroblasts. And their job there is to help fibroblasts make collagen and make connective tissue and even make high algeronic acids. So they have two jobs, really. They work at the, at the skin cell level in the epidermis, and the way they work there is they, they move everything upwards, and they work at the level of the dermis where the fibroblast is for the secretion of various connective tissue factors. Mm -hmm. So this, in order for this to occur correctly, you have to give it time after you've activated to do its work. Mm -hmm. You have to give the fibroblast time to secrete the collagen, the hyaluronic acid. You've got to give the keratinocytes and the skin cells time to right, go up to the top. So you've got to take days off. And it's like going it's to like working out, like you said earlier. Exactly. It's like working out. When you're lifting weights, you're not, you're not growing, you're, your biceps aren't growing when you're lifting weights. Right? Mm -hmm. You're growing the next day. Right. You're sitting on your butt watching TV and drinking coffee. <laughs> that's, and that's the rest period. And that's the way the body likes it. The body likes exercise and then rest. And it's really the best way to do it is short bursts of exercise. Have you mm -hmm. heard of this thing called high intensity training? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Interv yep. the, uh, interval training where you, you sprint and then you stop. And then right. you sprint and then you stop. That's the way the body likes to grow. Mm -hmm. It likes to be have a, hot, a, a, a cute stress, a quick burst of stress, and then lots of rest. Mm -hmm. Another big mistake people make, in addition to having their not being nutriated or having their skin malnourished, is they don't give their skin time to recover. Right. And that recovery period is going to be different for everybody. So you have to kind of feel out your skin. If your skin's still sensitive a little bit or it doesn't, right. look, it doesn't look like it's fully recovered from the, from the sloughing off, give it some time. You don't have to feel like you have to do it all the time and you're missing a day. And, you're, and I know there's a psychological thing if I yeah. miss a day. I'm not going to maximize the benefit. No, think about it like during the days off, that's when the collagen's growing. That's when the skin cells are moving upwards. And then the third thing is with our retinol is tiny, tiny amounts. Yes, the, yeah, absolutely. And the philo right? The philosophy behind tiny amounts is this is an organ. We don't think of it like an organ, but we say it's an organ. Mm -hmm. And so when you have an organ of the body, you don't want to interrupt it or interfere with it. As, as You want to interfere with it as little as possible. You don't want to put too much on your skin. What, what True Treatments allows you to do is to get the effects of a skincare product, the effects of an ingredient, without disturbing the skin. Right. When you, when you put a lot of stuff on the skin, a lot of product on the skin, you're putting uh, – Alcohol, acetyl alcohol and sterile alcohol and preservatives and fragrances and emulsifiers. And you're putting a cocktail on your skin. And not only that, but if you're slathering it, you're putting a bunch mm -hmm. on, you're putting a lot of stuff on your skin. Right. That's not how you treat the skin respectfully. Mm -hmm. When you treat the skin respectfully, you want to put a tiny little bit of ingredient. And that's what your treatments allow you to do because it's mm -hmm. so concentrated. But in what you have to recognize if you're going to do that is – you don't put too much on the skin. Now, we have a spoon that allows you to, that allows you to just put small amounts on there. But if you don't want to use a spoon, just small, small amounts, half a pea, 
size amount. It's much more important that you massage it all over and work mm -hmm. it in than you try to use a high dose of it. So oh, if you find that you're using retinol and you have, or are retinol and you're having a problem, mm -hmm. chances are you're overusing or you're using uh, in terms of frequency or you're using, overusing in terms of dose or your skin is not strong enough to be able to, to, be able to, handle, uh, to be able to handle the 5%. So what mm -hmm. I recommend people is they start off with the one, unless you're, unless you're sophisticated at your, your uh, hip to using retinol and you've used it before, mm -hmm. I recommend people start off with 1%. Yeah. And by yeah. the trial size of the 1%, in the last few couple of months, your skin will be acclimated to it. And remember, with our retinol, you're getting 25% vitamin C in there too. It's a, it's a, a fully comprehensive, well-rounded, active, uh, active product for, for anti-aging, for lightening the skin, for growing connective tissue, for, uh, improving fine lines and wrinkles, improving high hyaluronic acid secretion, just all around, uh, an all-around health tool. Now, the last thing I want to tell you is there's this idea out there that there's uh, uh, somehow that you shouldn't be using vitamin C and retinol together. <laughs> yeah. Not true. I get that all the time. True. Right. Without the vitamin C, it's stabilized. It's a fatty right. vitamin C, as you know. It never mm -hmm. oxidizes. It never goes bad. And so you get the benefits of vitamin C with the benefits of retinol. And instead of mm -hmm. them negating each other, they actually synergize each other. You mm -hmm. get better penetration of the vitamin C post-retinol, and the vitamin C allows you to use more retinol because it has an antioxidant protective property. So it, it mm -hmm. takes some of the bite out of the retinol, and so they work together. They synergize each other. And that's why I, want, I wanted to put it together in one product. And it's not just any, uh, it's not just any vitamin C, it's that soluble vitamin C, but it's not just any amount of vitamin C, it's 25% vitamin C, which is, as you know, in the business, it's hard to find a 25% vitamin C just by itself, let alone with 5% retinol, yeah. or one, if you use our retinol 1%. We also have our retinol that little jar. Mm -hmm. What's that? I think you're getting so much in that tiny little you're jar. so much in that <laughs> jar. You're getting yeah. change triglycerides, and you're getting fatty acid esters and vitamin C and, mm -hmm. uh, and retinol, of course. Now, last thing I want to say is that our retinol spot treatment is mm -hmm. great for treating, it's 2% retinol. It's great for treating uh, specific spots, but here's another really cool thing about retinol, Leah, and this is actually a, like a really interesting benefit because retinol pushes everything upwards. Mm -hmm. It helps speed up the movement of cells. That's called turnover time or transit mm -hmm. time. And uh, because retinol has an effect of speeding up turnover time or transit time, if you have a bug bite, It'll mm -hmm. speed up the release of the toxins. It'll help heal your bug bite much quicker. Oh, okay. Right? Is that interesting? That and is. also, if you have ingrown hairs, it'll help pull everything up as well. So mm -hmm. it prevents ingrown hairs, and it's great for mosquito bites or bug bites. Uh, in addition, which is an interesting benefit that you get from it. Whoever heard of a skincare product is great for bug bites, right? A beauty oh, well, product. You're, you're obviously not in our skincare group because we always talk about if you have a bug bite, um, like, People always put truth treatments products on them, and it, it does. It's like a range. It's either the Omega. Some people put sea balm, and they're like, it feels amazing, and it's already gone. So we're right. we get that. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and I always thought, you know, I developed these in my compounding pharmacy for healing. All these products were their their pedigrees to is to be healing products, and I just noticed that when people would come back for refills for their burn creams or yeah. their uh, you know their their post surgical cream, that their skin would be more beautiful. And I'd be like, oh, it dawned on me that the same thing that was happening was when the skin was healing was what people wanted in a beauty product. And I basically just repurposed all these prescription, pro my prescription products, uh, mm -hmm. healing products for beauty products. Right. And that's, that's what the truth was. Mm -hmm. So I, that makes perfect sense to me. But it's very unusual in the world of skincare to have a beauty product that's also a first aid product circling back to the percentages I think a lot of people have like FOMO with skincare they're like no I need that five percent you know so and so can use it or my friends using it and I want to use that and I'm always like please don't and like you said the trial size which is like 15 ml it yeah. lasts a month so yeah. you know and yeah. in, in speaking to not just the one percent the five percent if you are new to retinol you are still going to have like side effects with vitamin a that's just a common most you know very common so and some of the side effects are peeling um and that is not everybody's gonna peel right peeling is more, yes. the, mm -hmm. that's right some people peel a lot the peel right. is more a function of what's on top of the skin mm -hmm. than it is the retinol so if you have a lot of dead cells or if your skin is not mm -hmm. as healthy as it might be if it's, it's not as uh it's the fats basically if it's not loaded up with essential fatty acids and other fats 
uh, fatty vitamins, you may have more stratum cornea, more corneocytes right. on the surface. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very interesting, Leah. The exfoliative process, or technically the disquamatory process, exfoliation right. is is what or is uh, uh, a uh, outside version of desquamation. Desquamation mm -hmm. is what happens naturally. Exfoliation is what we do in the spa or what we do in our bathrooms. Mm -hmm. So the desquamation process, which is how cells rise to the top and then flop off, is very complex. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of chemistry that has to go right in order for this simple little thing that we don't even think about, how cells rise to the top and flop off, there's hundreds of chemical reactions that have to occur for that to, for that to happen effectively. Mm -hmm. And so when that doesn't happen under conditions of nutritional deficiency largely or toxicity, then skin cells pile up on the surface. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily see them, but they give the skin a sort of dull, unhealthy kind of appearance and that peeling that you're getting is really the sloughing off, of, uh, the artificial sloughing off or the external sloughing off of cells mm -hmm. that should have been coming off on their own. Now, right. over time, with, with regular use of retinol, the cells will flop off on their own during the week. You're not going to see them. They'll be microscopic. And mm -hmm. then when you do the peel, you do use your retinol, you're not going to have that same peeling effect. But mm -hmm. for some people who aren't, who are, who aren't uh, desquamating as effectively, the cells will be piling up, and you're going to get you're going to get layer after layer after mm -hmm. layer of healing. But that right. does go away over time for most mm -hmm. people. And if you if you find it uncomfortable, then make sure you're loaded up with fats. And right. some people like it actually. Mm -hmm. Some people yeah, some people like it. They don't. <laughs> right? Some people think it's not working. If that doesn't mm -hmm. happen, that's not correct at all. The job of the uh, retinol product is not to induce peeling. It's mm -hmm. to deliver vitamin A, which is a very important mm -hmm. skin hormone. Which is, and I'm literally a hormone that triggers the growth of skin cells and turns on the production of collagen and connective tissue factors at the level of the fibroblast. That's the role of retinol. The sloughing off and the peeling is just a function of how every it, 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 uh, its ability to accelerate the movement of cells from the bottom to the top. Yeah, absolutely. And so if people want to like mitigate that process, of course, not using it daily, I always tell people. If you're going to peel, it's going to be on day three. And I don't, and I always use the term peel loosely because it's not like with a retin-A or a chemical peel where you get those like, you know, sheet peeling. It's more like right. a deep roughy peel. So I guess I should correct myself because I know what people assume when they hear peel, it's like a chemical peel. And it's just a little dandruffy peel with the retinol. So um, they could, you know, mix it with the sea balm a little bit. I know a lot of people love that if you're, you know, being a little dry. Without yes. any feels amazing. Omega, the omega six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can either you can either blend the two. You can use the omega six the next day, or you mm -hmm. can put a little uh, of the retinol on and then follow it up with the omega six. And I I always encourage blending. All of our products blend perfectly together. Yeah. The retinol and the serum and the transdermal C serum. The retinol and the balm. The retinol and the omega six. The omega six mm -hmm. and the serum. They all they all blend together very very mm -hmm. nicely. Yeah, and I think for a lot of people who, um, you know, they think more is better, and this that tiny little half a pea with the mist, they don't feel like that's enough. When they start uh, doing a little bit of each, it gets, they feel like it's actually enough. But I think that's where a lot of the issue come from, comes from with overuse. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I want to feel this on my skin. Yes, yes. And I'm like, no, yes. you like you should you not feel, feel it. You don't yeah, you should feel it on your skin. No. You don't want to feel it on your skin. That's right. You hit the nail on the head. We mm -hmm. feel like if we, we think if we don't feel it on the skin, we don't anything. have enough that we right. that we haven't put enough on. No, mm -hmm. you don't want to feel it. You just want to feel skin. With all right. of our formulations, tr treatments, you don't want to feel product on the skin. You mm -hmm. just want to feel skin. Know that the more you drive that material down into the lower levels of the epidermis and even into the dermis, that's where your effects. That's where you're going to get your mm -hmm. benefits. And it'll uh, you'll, the skin will look good right when you put it on for sure. Mm -hmm. The really great benefits are two or three or four days down the road as the fibroblasts and the keratinocytes mm -hmm. have absorbed the, uh, the retinol and the vitamin C. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you won't agree with me. We've briefly kind of discussed this before. But Is it about our juice? Is it about my juice? I was going to show you my soda, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I was actually, I know we briefly discussed this before about like Retin-A being like the gold standard. So I know as a pharmacist, you know, you won't agree with me, but I have to give you a shout out. Like all of our clients that I, you know, of course, if it's doctor prescribed, we leave them on that. 
for people who just bought a retin-A off the internet or Mexico, however they got it, I'm always like, you know, finish it up. When you're ready, let me know. You have to try, you know, Truth Treatments Retinol. And it's it does more for them after years of Retin-A use. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. So I know you won't agree with me. You're the formulator. You should agree with me. I just don't think Retin-A is the gold standard. I just it's think, what, yeah, what you provide um, does so much more, and it gives just beautiful results without, yeah, the excessive irritation, without the excessive redness and peeling. So I, I just thank you. I, I appreciate you saying that. that. Yeah, absolutely. Coming from, you, coming from you, that's a huge compliment. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, it's not just for me. It's all of our clients. Like, I get excited when we, you know, do the follow-up six, eight weeks later, and they're like, oh, my gosh, I wish, you know, I've been using Retin-A for 20 years. And I'm like, I told you. You didn't want to believe yeah. me. But, so yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, you know, with that is the proper use of the product. And you know what else? If you try to use Retinol or Retin-A or any kind of stimulating <laughs> ingredient in the past and you're afraid of it, Get mm -hmm. yourself on some uh, essential fatty acids. We'll simply put, I'll send you the different brands and such. Mm -hmm. um, and then give it a month. And then mm -hmm. phytonutrients as well, and maybe zinc and vitamin A and some other, some other uh, supplements. And then give it a month. Take your supplements for a month. And not only will you notice that you're able to use the retinol, but you'll notice that your skin's looking better anyway. And mm -hmm. you'll notice that if you, sun, if you sunburn mm -hmm. or if your skin is sensitive, you're not burning as readily and your skin is not as sensitive once you load your skin up with nutrients. And as much, Clay, as much as I love formulating skincare products, mm -hmm. I've been doing it for decades, I got to tell you, you have to take care of your nutrition. You have to take care of the nutrients, especially, especially when it comes to the skin, especially mm -hmm. fats and fatty vitamins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's been a long time coming, but people very slowly are starting to yeah. see yeah. the benefits of holistic um, you know, skincare is not just about what you apply externally, it's what you're, you know, putting inside internally. And, you know, when you put those two together, the results are just going to be even more extraordinary. So absolutely. And then one quick thing about like the 5%. So I always tell people the 5% retinol is a true treatment product, like the name truth treatments is a treatment product. You know, I tell people every like 10 days that, you know, are new to it. Do you agree with that? Like yes, how, how do you tell absolutely. people to use it? It's hard, you know, people want, it's hard for people to do it every 10 days, but yes, I absolutely recommend that a 10 day, every 10 days, and then work yourself into every seven days, and mm -hmm. for some people, maybe twice a week, but for most people, once every seven days. Now, if you have, you can tell, the three things you want to look for are, number one, you want to look for thickness of the mm -hmm. skin, number two, you want to look for a certain kind of shine to the skin, that's sebum mm -hmm. to the skin, and number three, you want to look at pore size, mm -hmm. the pores, skin grows to the pores. So yep. the bigger the pore size, the more shine you have to the skin or kind of a waxy covering to the skin, mm -hmm. the stratum corneum, the corneocytes, and the thicker your skin, the more you can use uh, retinol or alpha hydroxy acids for that matter, anything stimulating. Mm -hmm. The bigger your pores, the more delicate your skin and the more fragile your skin, the less you're going to be able to use it. So to give you a classic example, African-American male skin is the ultimate skin. Mm -hmm. That's the strongest skin. Yep. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum would probably be elderly Asian skin, elderly okay. Asian female skin. And a mo a people are in the, you're going to be usually between that spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of the, the extremes of, of fragil skin fragility and skin strength. And most right. people are somewhere in between. The more, the stronger your skin type is, the more you can use it, the less strong your skin is, the more fragile your skin is, the less mm -hmm. you're going to use it. But keep in mind, the more you do your nutrition and the more you do your retinol, the stronger your skin's going to get. Mm -hmm. So it's like weightlifting, you know? Yeah, you know, I'm glad you like. I'm glad you said that because I'll probably edit this part out. But I always find that a lot of people um, with Retin A in particular, as you know, they're they think that's what they're supposed to be on. They're like, I have to use the one percent. I'm really fair. I'm Irish. I'm you know, blue eyes, fair skin, really thin. And they're like, no, I you know, I have to work up to that one percent, or I'm not doing anything, and I just can't get there. And for me, I'm like, no, like. When I see somebody who can use a really high strength of 5% or Retin-A 1%, it's the darker skin types, it's yeah, the yeah. men, it's the oilier skin types. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Everybody else will not agree with that, but I feel like you kind of see my opinion. Yes, yes, <laughs> but, yes. You, well, you've seen it. 
you yeah, see that. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, for me, like, I tell everybody I'm very fair, um, you know, I have very thin skin. I'm happy with my 1% retinol or my, like, low percent retinol to hide. I'm fine staying there. I don't feel like I'm doing myself a disservice by yes. not going up to that 5%. Like, well, I look, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Yeah, I listen to my skin, and, you know, if I feel like at some point, my skin's telling me I can do a 5%, but I'll do it. But at this point, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. It's happy. <laughs> yeah. See you, and see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.